Clay from AccessReal.com. We're here at uh, Perth Supernova and we're talking to Dean Hagland. Look at that. And I was uh, the very first celebrity Leith met at the very first convention in San Diego, so he <laughs> told right. me. That's right, 2005. I met Dean. Look at that. You're freaked first, out, first, apparently. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> it's all a big circle. Comes and now you're, full, like, you're interviewing all of <laughs> yeah, them. Like, right. How did that happen? <laughs> You could have just hung out for 10 years and just got the autographs now. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that would have been easy. No, I had to get involved. You All see, right, of course. Right. Yeah, you had to get your feet wet. <laughs> now, um, you just moved to Sydney. I did. I'm Newtown's newest resident. Why? <laughs> uh, my go? better half got promoted. She's head of financial operations and planning for her company. I okay. purchased uh, like four or five companies here in Australia. So, right. right. So she is the uh, crack in the whip. Yeah. And uh, the company paid for... The house, the car, us transferring, my visa, mm. our dogs coming over. They right. paid for all of that. So, yeah, yeah they dogs did the full blood work and proper immigration because <laughs> our dogs Cause know. you want to break the rules or we'll threaten to kill your dogs. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and my dogs know Pilot and Boo because Johnny Depp lives in the penthouse of the building I'm in. Yeah. So there's a common backyard area for the dogs. So my dogs know uh, his dogs, but I don't know Johnny Depp. So, <laughs> so the dogs are watching TV going, yeah, how do they get with... Yeah, through degrees of separation. Yeah, exactly. Through yeah, through the dogs. That's how I know Johnny <laughs> Depp. That's my claim to fame. <laughs> now, um, in recent years, you've been doing the, the Chill Pack Hollywood to a podcast. Podcast, yeah, yeah. Chill Pack Hollywood Hour. How, how, did, that, how did that get started? Uh, me and my co-producer uh, at the time, I had a production uh, office, and he had his uh, foreign distribution he was the president of a foreign distribution company. We had side-by-side -side offices. Right. And we meet every Monday. We just start talking about movies we've seen, mm. what's going on. And our assistant at the time thought the conversation was uh, very interesting. And then he started recording it. Okay. And then he would put it up. And then that's sort of how the, the podcast evolved. <laughs> so now nine years, every Monday, haven't mm. missed a show. And we're going to continue. So Sydney's not going to not going to Not going to be an issue. I'm going to work gonna, on it. I'm going to be uh, recording Sunday. <laughs> or he has to get up uh, uh, Saturday night right. or something like that. I forget how that timing works. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we're going to continue doing a free podcast every Monday as we have for the last nine years. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's great. That's good to hear. Yeah. Um, now, of course, you're very well known for... Your involvement in the X Files. Yes, uh, you guys. My involvement, <laughs> technically, <laughs> yeah, on, on my right. on-camera involvement. Yeah. <laughs> um, you guys, the Lone Gunman appeared regularly throughout all the seasons, right through to season nine. Yes. Can you tell us just quickly a little bit about how you first got involved with the show? Uh, very quickly, I auditioned. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, there's more. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sorry. Uh, yeah. So they liked you. <laughs> that was it. Was yeah. Chris Carter at the audition? No, he wasn't actually. No? Uh, there was a director by the name of, oddly enough, uh, Billy Graham. Right. Not the Billy Graham, guy William Graham. And uh, at the time, they didn't know what the gunman was to look like or mm. stuff like that, mm. because James uh, Wong and, and Glenn Morgan had seen three guys in an airport, one in a suit, one in a leather jacket, and one with long hair, handing out brochures on UFOs. Yeah, right. At a small, and they thought, oh, this is brilliant. We've got to put this in a TV show. So when the X-Files came along, they wrote those characters in the show. And then when they were like trying to audition, People, they like, oh, yeah, okay, we'll take the long-haired guy. Mm. And then I read against other actors, including Gary Jones from Stargate SG-1. Oh, okay. He auditioned for Byers, right. didn't get it, uh, got Bruce Harwood instead. And then I met Bruce Harwood on set, and they go, well, who'd we get for the Frohickey character? Mm. And they said, oh, the, the AD, the assistant director, first assistant. I'm going, what kind of crap show is this? They get the assistant director to, like, read lines. So... <laughs> Turns out he's a trained actor and yeah. uh, was just doing the assistant directing uh, because he was good at it. Yeah. And so the three of us, that's how we became the Lone Gunman. <laughs> so um, Frohickey Byers and Langley all have their own eccentricities. Yes, um, theoretically. Now Langley was, um, he had a background of role playing and gaming as part that's of his right. character. How did that come about? Did you guys have any input? into those little characteristics that were sort of just in the background in the context of your character? Not really. It was no. more uh, Vince Gilligan was yeah. always researching that sort of thing. And right. he was, a, uh, I think he did some gaming okay. early on. So then uh, when the episode shows a lot of our background, which is Unusual mm. Suspects in season five. Mm. Well, Langley's kinda, got the D&D &D game. Yeah, <laughs> well, I got the D&D &D game. They actually flew down uh, consultants from Wizards of the Coast that, oh, that. Yeah, and they had set it up so that if you look at that gameplay, that's the genuine, that's the genuine deal <laughs> as precisely as possibly done. Right. And my character, my D&D uh, uh, &D character's name, Lord Manhammer, mm. was actually uh, purchased by a guy who emailed me going, hey, are you using that D&D &D name? And then 
So can I have it? Right. I'll give you money for it, which I didn't take because I didn't like. Who do you, you know? I said you should pay Vince. I think he wrote that. Yeah. I don't know if he did, but there's yeah. another now. There's a D and D actual D and D character called Lord Manhammer. <laughs> In the official continuity. In the official yeah continuity of D and D. Um, now, how was it like going from the support role to the front and center role from X Files to Lone Gunman? Uh, it was pretty good actually because yeah. we had like four or five episodes that. When David and Jillian were unavailable, mm. they were like, okay, we know in advance they're busy, so we'll write a gunman episode yeah. and take the yeah. pressure off those guys. So yeah. by that time, there was already like three, four or five, maybe? You've done three that a four. few times, yeah. Done a few times, so yeah. we were all comfortable and, and that sort of thing. Were you surprised at all that they, they went, went ahead with a lone gunman solo series? Uh, yes and no, because I knew they had uh, Harsh Realm. They had like uh, mm. other shows that they were trying to launch and it was just tough. Mm. And then they all were sitting around going, wait a sec, here's the pilot, one of the X-Files episodes. So they just sent that to the executives. Yeah. And they went, oh yeah, that's, that's a show. Let's yeah. run that one. You guys must have been pretty psyched when you uh, found out. We were psyched, but uh, it was also a bit confusing because nobody actually told us. And in fact, I drew a comic book called Why the Lone Gunman Was Cancelled. I've heard of this. <laughs> yes, all true story of how it came together and, and how it fell apart. And part of the coming together is that the actors, me, Tom, and Bruce, were the last to know officially mm. that there was a series. The reporters knew, everybody was talking about it, and then we even go to Chris going, uh, is this happening? He goes, hold right there, and he walks off and gets on the phone. <laughs> and we don't hear anything for like, m like months on end mm. till finally Frank Spotnitz goes, oh yeah, yeah, you guys are in a series, right. by the way. But by this time, we're like, well, are they getting Polly Shore? Like, who are they, <laughs> like, are they recasting yeah, this? We didn't yeah, know, right? So okay. the whole thing. Um, now, when, when season nine came around, X-Files wrapped up, and of course right. you guys met your untimely demise in, in that season. Though. No. But season 10 comics did resurrect you guys. Right. And now we're looking down the barrel of six more episodes, uh -huh. continuing the story post, I want to believe. Right. Resolution. Can you tell us? I can tell you I haven't got a phone call. <laughs> right. But Chris Carter did say there's a very good chance the gunman will show up. Mm -hmm. They've written the three. They're going to write three more yep. after they shoot the first three. Okay. So uh, if it's like it used to be in the old days, when you have, write a script and it's uh, too long, like it's 60 pages and it should be 43 for uh, mm -hmm. television, uh, they would cut three or four scenes and just get the gunman to say a bunch of lines and somehow magically hack into a facility that suddenly Mulder and Scully <laughs> would show up in. So... Uh, so we're going to do, that's probably going to happen, but uh, yeah, I haven't heard anything. Okay. And uh, of course, you know, when you saw the funeral scene of the gunman, mm. all the coffins were the same size, and if it's supposed to be hermetically sealed, one of those coffins should have been shorter than the <laughs> other two. That's how you knew that's we weren't right. in there. All right, well, right. I'm excited. New X-Files is great. Hopefully you guys will be involved. Let's cross our fingers. That's Dean Hagland, Hagland talking to us uh, at Supernova Perth. Thanks very much for your time. It's good to see you after 10 years. Cool. <laughs> <laughs>